Hi, my name is Sam Pickman. I'm director of product here at Allied Cycle Works. Um, we're here at our headquarters in Little Rock, Arkansas, um, and we are going to be running you through uh, what we do here at the factory, how we make bikes. Okay, here we are in the cutting room. So we have a uh, 2D plotter here that's cutting out ply shapes that are specific to our bike. Um, so she's going to actually build these kits for every single part that we make and then deliver these off to the layup team next door. All right, so here we are in the layup room. Um, so each one of these stations, each of the workers works on a specific preform or part. Um, this one here is for a 49. It is the seat tube cluster part. It's got your seat stay spuds um, and then the parts where it's going to connect to the seat tube and the top tube. So they each work on those uh, individually and then those parts get assembled into um, this full front triangle uh, part. So you can see that actually that, that part we were just looking at is going to belong right here and they're going to thread that one pretty soon. Um, so we make uh, head tube preforms, bottom bracket preforms, and then each of the tubes and they get joined up in this cure tool, um, assembled, um, where the tool will then be closed and then head off to start the curing process. Over here we've got um, this team over here working on forks. This is a disc fork right here. So this part's actually been completely laid up. We're now um, going to add in um, the, the fastener for the bolt. So that's going to be your disc brake tab right there. So you're just going to put an opening in there. That'll drop in and then this is going to get some reinforcement plies around it. Um, forks are also laid up in parts. We've got another one over here, some crown plies. These are all different crown preform tools. Here we've got some leg preforms. And then this is a complete preform ready for cure now that's ready to be dropped into the tool. So it's got um, the insert now completely ready to go. This has got um, mostly carbon reinforced but then some uh, fiberglass scrim to help get fill around that boss. We've got examples of all the different preforming tools. This here is a head tube preforming tool for a 49. This is the exact geometry of the finished part. You can see they, they're going to actually lay plies into these parts based off of a ply manual. Uh, those ply manuals live on these tablets. These describe the, um, the ply location, the ply number, the material, the orientation, and they just basically scroll through by operation number um, and follow the recipe. This one here is for a down tube. It's a pretty easy one. It's probably one of the parts that we'll make tomorrow with you. And it gets laid up onto one of these guys right here. So this is, um, this is laying onto a male mandrel right here. This is laying into a female. And you're going to lay the plies right onto these parts um, just exactly how the recipe says. This is the bulk of our teams actually in this room. Um, most of the process lives here. Uh, there's still a lot of things that happen but in terms of time, energy, effort, um, and complexity is really uh, focused on this room. After the tool is closed, it gets this envelope bag, just like this. You can see the chucks are here, here, and there. Those chucks are vented to atmosphere. This bag is then, um, we have vacuum applied to the bag here. So all around the part is experiencing vacuum um, or minus one atmosphere. And then all these bags are experiencing uh, just regular atmospheric. So the bags are actually inflating right now inside of here. Um, and then also the air is being pulled from the laminate um, inside this vacuum bag. So what that does is try to eliminate as much air as possible from the laminate. Air is kind of the enemy or one of the enemies. Um, you want to get rid of as much as possible. 
This process is called uh, closed tool debulk, and uh, it's something fairly unique to us in the bike industry. So they're gonna unwrap this thing, then they're gonna install one piece of hardware, and then it'll go into the presses. The whole process takes another five minutes or so, maybe a little bit less. So they'll hook up the airlines. He's applying the, um, the downward press pressure on there. This thing will press at 20 tons. Um, not totally necessary because we also bolt the tool closed, but, uh, but it's amazing what 120 PSI inside that, it has huge opening force. Um, so it's you know, over 10 tons of, of opening force trying to pull that thing. Now you have to insert that thermocouple. That thermocouple is gonna be measuring the, the, the part temperature, as close to the part temperature as possible. Um, and then, so it starts off at a pretty low pressure. It's just kind of letting those bags kind of inflate slowly. And then as the temperature ramps up, uh, that pressure is also gonna increase. Um, also, as we get to uh, the point where this resin is becoming extremely viscous, there's a period where it's, it's very, very, very viscous. We're actually gonna bump the pressure a couple of times in order to uh, help all those plies get to, the, get to that tool edge um, or get to the outer surface as best as possible. So after we come off of the presses, it comes over here to cool for a little bit. The tool has to cool off. You don't wanna pull your part out um, immediately after it comes off the press because it can distort. So Anthony's now, he's removed all the bolts, all the fasteners, and we're ready to crack this thing open so we can see how the part looks. So we got pry points that he's pulling from. These are meant for just that, for getting a pry bar in there to be able to crack that tool open. The, tool, the part's gonna stay connected to one side because the inserts are connected to one side. And there is a 58 normal frame. You've got your resin flashes pulled off on the edge here. You've got a nice glossy resin, high resin content surface. There's a nicely cured part. So after all the parts are molded, um, they get cleaned up a little bit, deflashed. Some of the bond areas get uh, cleaned up a little bit with some uh, sanding and machining. Um, and then they get brought over here for bonding. So the bonding process is done all in these jigs. Um, so these are all you know, set geos for, for Ally, for the Alpha. Um, and we're bonding here at the chain stays and the seat stays. Uh, and then they get a uh, little bit of elevated temperature cure here in the jig so we can pull them off quickly and then get them on to the next step. So after bonding and some sanding to get rid of excess glue around the bond areas, these bond joints then get um, wrapped with unidirectional carbon. So you can see uh, Vince here laying down some uh, zero degree plies right over that bond area. And the idea is to try to get this thing to run smooth. So there's little steps um, that the carbon's gonna sit in. And the idea is we're gonna wrap this enough times to make that step be totally flush. You can see there's a couple examples of finished joints up here and down on the chain stay. So these will get finished off with these little silicone wraps. And they'll get wrapped around those joints like this. And that gives a pretty nice smooth finish. It still requires some sanding to make it perfectly flush and smooth. Um, but the idea is to do kind of as little sanding as possible downstream. So after a couple of the steps, we come in here to sanding. In sanding, we've got this uh, high flow exhaust system that kind of draws a lot of the dust out, keeps the dust out of the rest of the building. Uh, but this is a dirty area. So we're doing both a couple things. One, uh, after bonding, we clean the glue off, get the bikes ready for uh, wrapping. Um, two, after the bikes are wrapped, they get sanded and ready for the first part of the paint process. Uh, and then finally, they get final sanded before paint.
These bikes here have all been hit with a, uh, a high build clear. Um, this is actually mostly sanded off to get down to a totally smooth surface. Um, so this gets built up and then sanded off so we don't have any sort of ridges or, uh, you know, bad surface lumps or anything like that. Because, you know, when you're bonding these areas together, uh, it's a slightly imperfect surface uh, after the wraps. So this helps get it perfectly smooth. All right, final step of the process. We're in assembly now. So these bikes are all uh, customer's bikes. Um, these ones all have homes. So James here is doing the final touches on one of these all roads. This will get assembled and then boxed up, ready to ride. So the end consumer will be able to just pull out of the box, put a front wheel in, put the seat post in, and it's gonna be ready to go. All right, so here we are. We're walking into the test lab here. We got Clay who's just, uh, set up a pedal fatigue on the machine on an alpha so here we've got two actuators alternating um, they're putting 1200 newtons into the bike we've got this guy simulating chain load and this is a pretty uh, standard industry test this is one you'll see from a lot of bike companies but um, an important one obviously because it simulates testing you're looking for um, you know integrity of the bottom bracket chain stays um, but it also shows uh, how good your layup is from the down tube uh, through the head tube into the top tube here. Um, that's gonna really affect your pedaling stiffness. So having the test lab here really tightens up the feedback loop. Um, we can uh, alter a layup. We can change it, come in here and break it, uh, figure out what's wrong, uh, make a revision, go out there and make another one. And we can do that turn in about 24, 48 hours, which is a uh, incredible advantage to have all those things under one roof.